WordPress 6.5 is finally available as a beta to download and test on your websites. And depending on when you're watching this video, it might already be released to the public, so you can update your WordPress website to WordPress 6.5. And just to read you something interesting statistics about 6.5, it includes 681 enhancements, 488 bug fixes for the editor and about 229 tickets closed for the WordPress 6.5 core. Now you don't care about all of that, you just care about the interesting features that are available in WordPress 6.5. Glad you are on this video because that's the exact thing I'm gonna cover in this video. All the exciting things, new changes, new features, bug fixes, and some subtle changes inside WordPress 6.5 which you should be aware about. Now, keep in mind, it's still in beta. So if you're watching this video, when this comes out instantly, don't update your WordPress website to the latest version of 6.5 if you have a live website. Only do this on a testing environment or a test website. With that, let's get started with the, all the new changes in WordPress 6.5. So the first exciting feature inside WordPress 6.5 is the ability to upload your own fonts. Now this feature is long been requested or long awaited, but it comes with a few catches inside WordPress 6.5. So let me give you a quick demonstration. This is a WordPress website with WordPress 6.5. And how do you actually access this feature? Make sure important or the important thing to note is that this only works if you have a block based theme because it works with the uh, WordPress editor. So if I go into the appearance, you see I have editor. And, but just to give you an idea, I'm using the default 2024 theme here, which you can see here. And if I go to the styles options, and if I edit the existing styles, if I go to the typography options here, you can see a couple of fonts that I have actually uploaded. What you can do is click this filters icon, and this allows you to manage your fonts. So in my testing, I actually uploaded these fonts. And what you can do is just go here, and just go to your computer, download uh, any font from any website that you can find, make sure that you have the rights to use the font, and you can just drag and drop it here. Now, some of these fonts don't work so if they're already existing. I already uploaded a few bunch of fonts, that's why you see these errors, but most formats are actually supported, which you can see right here. Now, the interesting part here is, if you go here and install fonts, then you'll see a giant button here, which will say, hey, install Google Fonts, and once you click that button instantly, you'll have access to all the Google fonts that you can directly just import to your site. And that is where this font actually came from. The Bella No Sima font came from Google fonts. And you can see there's so many different fonts available here. I can just keep browsing, 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 and I can just pick any of these fonts and I can just instantly have this available on my website without having to use any other plugin. So let's say for example, if I want to use this font, I'll just click, I'll just click and install. And in a couple of seconds, this font is now installed on my site, which I can see here. Now, the interesting part is, if you go and actually just create a new post here, let me just refresh this page, let me sure, make sure it's fixed. And if I just have this post here, now what I can do is actually access all these fonts here directly in the block editor. So if I go here, you can see the typography options. If I um, click the three dotted menu, I can actually choose the font family. Now in my limited testing, this does not work with non-block based themes. So this is a website that I have set up, which is using the Astra theme, which is a non-block based themes, and it has the same fonts uploaded here. If I go here and actually access this settings, I can actually not see this option. This might be a theme dependent thing. But if I even go to the customizer here, inside the typography options, the fonts that I just installed are not actually visible here. So this might be just for block based themes and maybe support for non block based themes might come in the future. But if you're not using a non block based theme, you'll need, uh, still need to uh, use a plugin to actually upload your fonts or use the Google fonts integration plugin to actually have Google fonts uploaded on your site. But it's a welcome change inside WordPress 6.5. Personally, I'm very excited by this. On to the next feature. The next big improvement is in the block editor and the site editor. Both the block editor and the site editor are supposed to load two times faster and the input lag in the block editor is supposed to be four times faster compared to WordPress 6.4. There's also a UI improvement in WordPress 6.5 and let me demonstrate that to you. This is WordPress 6.5 and I have an identical page here on WordPress 6.4. Now if I use this image and click here and go to the styles tab, this is something that you've seen, right? You have the borders and you have the shadow, right? This is the new thing, shadow. If I go 6.4, you see just the border option. And if I click the three dotted menu, you just have the option of selecting the border and radius. But in WordPress 6.5, if you click the three dot menu, you also have now a drop shadow option. And you can click this to add a drop shadow to your image. 
So if I click this, you'll see a drop shadow all instantly appearing on the image. And it's a pretty cool feature to add a different variations of drop shadows right here on the site. I would recommend or I would wish that the customization ability for drop shadows also comes so that we can actually control what the distance is like, how far is it, and what's the, I say, uh, the blurriness of the shadow is. Right now, we just have a few presets, but it's a good start to add some 3D looking uh, appearance on your images. And of course, it's not available in WordPress 6.4, but 6.5 has this new feature. An important side note, which I should have mentioned, uh, this drop shadow feature is not limited to images. You can also add it to columns and single column. So you, when you're designing your website, you can add the drop shadow effect to actually design your layout of your website as well. So it's a quite, I'd say, a flexible way of having some interesting looks on your website. On to the next feature. Another cool feature in WordPress 6.5 is the automatic selection of the overlay color in the cover block. Let me demonstrate. So this is WordPress 6.5. And what I did was add a cover block and I used the same image that I was used or using for the demonstration for the drop shadow effect. And once I added uh, the cover block here and used the image here, automatically you'll see the overlay color was decided by WordPress. So if I click here, and go to the styles options, you'll see the overlay color is a gray color, which was automatically selected by WordPress. I didn't do this. And if I did the same thing with WordPress 6.4, you'll notice it's a dark uh, default color, which WordPress automatically applies. Now this works with a lot of different images. I did a little bit of testing. So what I did was I added a couple of very bright vivid images. This is again, WordPress 6.5. And if I go to the image as I go here, you'll see the overlay color here. And once again, if I do this, you'll see the overlay color here. Now, if I did this in WordPress 6.4, you'll notice that the overlay color is the dark color, default color, which is done by WordPress. And this is our, this is the change, big change in 6.5, automatic selection of an overlay color inside WordPress 6.5. Welcome feature, again, makes your life easier. The next welcome change in WordPress 6.5 is with regards to the document overview. Let me demonstrate. This is WordPress 6.4. And if you remember what you could do, if you had a group block in WordPress 6.4, you can actually rename it and name it anything you like. So if I hover over the group block and I click the three dotted menu, I can go here and actually rename it to say, let's say cover and I'll actually rename it and it'll show up here. Now you can't do this with actual block. So if I just click the three dotted menu, you don't see a rename option here. This changes with WordPress 6.5. In WordPress 6.5, you can rename groups here. So if I go here, you see the rename option, but I can also rename individual blocks. So if I go here and I just say here, click here, the rename option comes up here. So I can just say featured, oops, I can't spell, featured. Now if I click save, you'll see this block is also renamed. Another big change in WordPress 6.5 is with how you can edit or access these options. If I go to WordPress 6.4 here again, the only way to access these options is to click the three dotted menu. And only these options appear only if I click the three dotted menu. But in WordPress 6.5, I can just right click over these options and the options will appear. This is pretty cool. Again, a small but welcome change on how it makes it easy for designing websites with WordPress 6.5. The next small change in WordPress 6.5 is how link previews are shown. Let me demonstrate. This is WordPress 6.5 and this is WordPress 6.4. Of course, it looks identical, but let me demonstrate how linking works. This is 6.4. If I go here and I want to link to my homepage here, I can click the link button here and then I'll have to type in some keywords that actually determine my, let's say whatever page I'm trying to link to, especially internal pages. So if I type in home, now my homepage and a page which is also named or post, which is also named home show up. I can also click this and now the homepage is done. Now, if I click on this, the preview will show up with a few options, open a new tab, edit and actually disconnect. This is the 6.4 experience, but how is it different in 6.5? Let's see it. So I'll do just uh, do the same thing here. I'll double click on homepage. I'll click this and instantly you'll see some of the preview automatically appears on the pages of my website. If you have more internal pages, some of these might show up. I haven't done extensive testing. I've created a few pages and some of them are actually showing up here. So if I click this now, instantly this preview option, which was I actually had to explicitly open in 6.4, it appears here. And it also has a new option, which is duplicate or copy the link here. If I click this, the link will be copied. And if I now click on the link again, similar to how 6.4 actually opened up the preview here, you can see these obviously the toolbar, but you, this option is also visible, which includes the copy URL button here. So this is how the interface is different in WordPress 6.5 compared to 6.4. Another small tweak in WordPress 6.5 is how preferences are displayed. So if you don't know where preferences are, you can go into the three dotted menu here 
and open preferences. This is WordPress 6.4, by the way. So in this case, you have the general, the blocks and the panels, and you can go here and figure out what the preferences are and you can change them. In WordPress 6.5, there's a subtle difference. If I go here and go to the preferences, you'll find that there's, we have general appearance, accessibility and blocks. And in 6.4, we had general blocks and panels. So the settings have been organized better. And also the default, uh, whatever the, uh, the setting is selected, it's in bold in WordPress 6.4, but in 6.5, all these settings actually appear in bold and whatever you hover on is, is a different color and it, the selection or whatever preference you've highlighted is highlighted differently uh, it i think it looks better in my opinion the bold fonts here compared to the normal fonts here so this is again a small but welcome change in wordpress 6.5 the next few exciting features about WordPress 6.5 are all about the site editor. But there's an exciting change inside the synced blocks feature which make them much more powerful and useful. So let me demonstrate first the existing behavior inside WordPress 6.4. What I did was create a sync block or a pattern which I can now reuse on the entirety of my website. Now you know that if I create this block or create this synced block, I cannot change this everywhere, right? If I make the change uh, anywhere or if I've changed the origin block, the changes will be propagated to everywhere I use this synced block. This is one of the limitations of the synced blocks. But WordPress 6.5 has made a very, very important change where what you can do is you can actually make some changes to some of the instances of the synced blocks and make them more powerful. Now, I'll give you a real example, but think of it like this. If I wanted to add a product review uh, kind of a sync block and make it a template, I can use sync blocks in WordPress 6.5 to actually do this. How? Let me demonstrate. So first in 6.4, if you hover or click on the sync block, there's no option to edit here or just make any changes. Of course, you can make the change, but that will just override everything. But in 6.5, if I do this, I have this option called edit original. And if I click this option, now what WordPress 6.5 will allow me to do is select some blocks that I can actually change on a per instance basis. So if I click here in the pro section, I can go into the advanced tab and select this option, allow instance overrides. I can do the same thing for cons. Now I think this feature is a little buggy because if I was checking out for list based items, I couldn't see this option. But if I see heading blocks, I can see this option. I can see paragraph blocks and I can see this option. But for some reason, it's not working with all the blocks, but I'm pretty sure it will be fixed. Now, if I update this block here or synced block here and go back, now voila whatever uh, blocks that I enable that feature for, I can actually make changes on the fly. So if I just say here, positive features, and if I say negative features, now I can actually just make this change here, and this is affecting only this instance of the sync block, not everywhere that I've added. So this allows me to create templates that I can just fill in. So example, I can just come here and change the conclusion to final words, and actually add the conclusion of whatever the product is right here without affecting the sync block. So you change, and I think it's very powerful, and it'll help uh, create templates and structures inside websites, which will help uh, web webmasters and or content creators create content faster and with more structure. That's an amazing feature in WordPress 6.5. Another small change inside WordPress 6.5 is availability of more filters and sort options inside the editor. So this is WordPress 6.4 and if you went into the patterns and checked out any patterns, you had search here and you had a couple of filters that you can utilize to quickly find the patterns you're looking for and make changes to it. And WordPress 6.5, there are a few new changes. So instead of the uh, full width search bar, your search bar is here and you also can reset filters. You have the sync uh, status filter available here. You can also go to the view options here and then you can also use search options. So you can sort them by title, ascending or descending. You can also have sync status fields, which you show up here. Also change the number of items on the page. Small but welcome change, again, which makes the editor a little more usable. Another small but welcome change inside WordPress 6.5 is the revision history to changes to styles. Let me demonstrate. So in WordPress 6.4, this is 6.4 by the way, the revisions to style changes can be viewed, but they are not very descriptive. So you see here that default styles, this was the default style and this was the change made. But what was the change? You could not tell. In WordPress 6.5, the changes are a little more descriptive. So switching to 6.5 here, you can see default styles, changes made, changes made, changes made. And this is just me updating the style, not actually making any changes. But I, when I did actually make a change, you can see here uh, who made the change. 
the color styles, what was changed, and all the other things that were changed. And you can see these styles are already applied to your website. So this history actually helps you keep track of who made what changes to your site. So if there's a problem, you can go back and also just keep track of whatever style changes you're making on your website. Very welcome, very helpful and useful change in WordPress 6.5. All right, the last and the most exciting change in WordPress 6.5 is a preview of something that is called the Interactivity API. Now, what WordPress is trying to introduce is a modern way of creating web pages that are not old school or that are not like old school pages which require the entire website to be refreshed and also present a more uh, faster and more authentic and say a better user experience which feels like 2024. Let me just give you a demonstration of this website. Now, this website is a demonstration created by the WordPress team for this interactivity API. You can just see it right here. And of course, I'll link this website down in the description so you can go and test it out yourself. Now, this is a typical movie-based database website. What's so special about it? This is where the interactivity API comes into play. Now, typically when you navigate through uh, different pages on your site, or let's say, let's say a WooCommerce product page, you go to navigate uh, page two, page three, the entire page has to reload and it takes time, it's not very fast and efficient. But look at the screen and pay uh, close attention to what's gonna happen. I'm gonna click next page and boom, instantly this section has been updated without actually the entire page needing to be reloaded. That is the big important part here. And I can keep doing this and see how fast this is and doesn't require the entire page to load. And even if the page is not loaded, I can keep clicking and the interactivity of the website is very, very responsive. So it feels very, uh, I'd say present and very, very uh, modern interface. And I'm very excited. So if I'm a lot a lot of words, uh, don't, don't mind if I'm not able to describe this because this is a very well welcome change for me in, inside WordPress. Now, this is not just about pagination. Of course, you can click anywhere here and this will open up the website and you can do the same thing you can see here if I'm changing the cast it's very fast I can play trailer and this opens up a pop-up it's very very efficient and fast and I can click the uh, like button and instantly it updates it here so this website is pretty cool and I think it's a great way to understand uh, how WordPress will evolve in the future and I'm very excited for this change because not only will this help developers create more modern interfaces, but also help users create more modern websites for our viewers and users so that we can provide a much I say, better experience for our viewers and create fast blazing websites that just load amazingly fast. So those are all the amazing updates to WordPress 6.5. My personal favorites are the synced blocks updates and the, also the interactivity API. I'm most excited about them. What are your favorite updates? Let me know in the comments. And of course, subscribe for more WordPress education. We made a lot of WordPress videos and I'll place some videos on the screen that you can watch next. You're watching Yuvraj from WP Beginner. Like, share, subscribe, comment, spread the good karma. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.